Hello again everyone, Cody is here. Today I'm flying from Washington Dulles Airport to Philadelphia Airport. I'm flying a Beechcraft King Air 350i. I'll set a flight level of 2500 feet. And let's go ahead and go inside and get started. Alright, take off the parking brake. And here we go. Feel the nose lifting up, the plane is very eager to take off. Here we go. Landing gear up. KH 419er, continue for east departure. I will contact you next when you leave my airspace. Turn into the proper head. Dulles Tower KH 419er, continue for east departure. Flaps up. I feel like the avionics or the aircraft flight modeling has changed since the last update. It seems a little bit more realistic. It flaps up more. I think they're all the way up. Oh, there we go. Okay. KH 419er, you are leaving my airspace frequency change approved. Alright, so we're almost at the actual altitude KH of one. I'm going to go ahead and turn change. on autopilot. Potomac approach KH 419er is Denver. type Beechcraft King Air 3 miles northeast of Dulles, 2,700 feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. KH 419er, Potomac approach. Squawk 7152. Squawk 7152, KH 419er. I'm going to pull back on the throttle because we're approximately at the altitude. Cleared through the Bravo airspace KH 419. All right, so autopilot's got us heading in the right direction at the right altitude. Let's look around a little bit. It seems like a really nice day. It I thought the weather was going to be kind of crappy, but then when I arrived at the airport here, it was actually very nice. KH 419er, you are leaving my airspace radar service terminated. Squawk 1200. Frequency change approved. Okay, so it looks like our speed is stable. I'm going to leave the throttle at the 50% point. Frequency change approved KH 419er. Go ahead and go outside. Look at approach KH 419er. Is type Beechcraft King Air Niner miles northeast of Dulles. Request flight following. KH 419er, Potomac approach. Squawk 5723. So I'm not super familiar with this area, but I think we're going over sort of Maryland. Squawk 5723 KH 419er. Is able to be to our east. Should be some interesting sights along the way. Copy KH 419er. Atomic approach KH 419er. Look around the horizon a little bit. Transition Bravo airspace. That type of camera view is kind of nice, being able to keep the plane kind of centered at least. Here's base KH for the nice. It's funny to me that the wheels up livery has the words backwards on this side. Maybe that's intentional. Uh, the right way. Seems to be that way on each of the liveries. So I hope that's a mistake.
Alright, let's go ahead and go back inside. I keep forgetting that when I'm in external view, one, one, nine, or decimal, with the seven, Xbox KH, control, four, one, nine, I can't use the left joystick because that's the uh, When you're in the drone, when using the showcase camera, or drone camera, both joysticks are visible because one moves and one looks, but I almost took us out of autopilot there. Alright, let's look around a little bit more here. Not much to see, really just a lot of land and some water. See a bunch of buildings over in this area. Might as well check this Going out. Going to one two four decimal five five KH four one nine er. Potomac approach KH four one nine er two thousand five hundred feet. Unfortunately, in four K, you don't KH get photogrammetry data. Um, I mean, decimal occasionally you might see some like this parking lot, but you're not going to see signs, logos, and things like that. I guess they don't have it high enough resolution. So. When I made the transition to 4K, things looked a lot less familiar, but a lot cleaner and crisper. And so, as you can see, it looks really nice, but um, it doesn't look super, I don't know, recognizable, I guess. But I think that's fine. Um, it's a flying game, it's not a driving game, not a walking game. Although it would be nice sometimes to be able to actually get out and walk around the plane, do a pre-flight checklist that way. I don't seem to have an ability to actually, you know, embody yourself. Some very interesting views here. kind of wish I knew where I was, but that's okay. I don't feel like doing a whole lot of homework before these flights. I'd rather just kind of discover what I see when I go there. Uh, this is all very interesting. I really like water for some reason. Maybe I'm dehydrated and thirsty all the time, I don't know. This is very pretty looking. Right, let's check on the plane. Heading is right. Speed is good. Altitude is good. So who knows what this place is, what this area is. Uh, some of that choppiness is us having to reload textures and things. The drone and the plane are far enough away now that they're not sharing textures. Oh, I can see my... Uh, shadow on the ground. That's interesting. I hadn't actually looked for that before. That's kind of fun. Let's see. Wait, where did it go? There it is. Okay. Interesting. I can see it from certain angles and not from others. Uh, I mean, we should stay connected to the shadow because we're connected to the plane. That's just a very interesting, <laughs> interesting way to see the flight. Uh, let's see if I can get it from a different angle. Uh, really only, I guess that one angle. There it goes. There it is. Let's see how close I can get to it and actually still be able to see the shadow. KH419 or contact the Potomac approach on 119 or decimal 7. Going to 119 or decimal 7 KH419 or. Yeah, it's a little hard to Potomac follow. It's kind of choppy. There's a lot of detail here. Look at all this. Feet. Not sure exactly where we are. Obviously, a major city center. Oh, there's Baltimore. Okay. Let's go check out Baltimore. Let's 
Interesting. Now normally you would expect to see some you know, company names on the buildings. Again, lack of photogrammetry data means you're not going to see that. But it still looks nice. It's very detailed. Um, everything looks really gray, but that's just, I guess, all the concrete asphalt. Um, I can tell my video settings are still good because occasionally my settings have reverted to like super low quality and what you'll notice then is a lot of anti-aliasing artifacts off in the distance and so the fact that we're not seeing any tells me that I've still got my time-based anti-aliasing turned on. Fascinated by bright red buildings for some reason. Maybe what I'll do is disconnect from the plane so I can kind of do my own thing. Let's just check on the plane though. Um, speed, heading, altitude are all good. All right, wait for all the textures to reload here. All right, well, we've got a major intersection or several intersections here actually. And I guess this is still Baltimore. All right, so you can see vehicles going up and over the overpass rather than underneath, which is kind of silly. Um, let's see if another truck comes by. We'll see that happen again. Yeah, there, there it goes. Oops. You can watch the truck. Uh, it kind of goes up and over and falls off the overpass. So a little bit of an issue with hierarchy, I guess, or something. Um, Oh, you can sure hear the traffic, though. I know there's just something so funny about this, especially cars that are going both directions at the same time on the same road. Um, isn't that a little problematic in the real world? That is so funny. All right, so what else can we see around here? I guess just a lot of freeways, a lot of car funny business. Head out to the water. Essex Sky Park, okay, some kind of an airport. These look like agricultural crop circles here. Or maybe they're um, evaporation ponds. They do kind of look like evaporation ponds or something. Uh, although it doesn't make sense that that's what those would be, but anyway, it looks interesting. Oops. Uh, more, you know, watery rectangles here. Or maybe it's sewage treatment or something, I don't know. Alright, I'm going to go back to the plane.
boring from the inside, but I'd like to spend a little bit of time in here. Let's see, do my uh, bird's eye view. It's always a nice way to look at things. Uh, let's see, look down a little. There we go. There, you can see everything. be able to click and get that to go away. Maybe I have to click there. Now usually you can click and get these things to disappear. I'm not sure why it's not. Let's see. Turn for this angle. There we go. You have to click on the shaft, I guess. There we go. Okay, better. Set the view and go back. Um, let's see where I want. Up and down. There we go. Let me zoom in a little bit. Alright, that's kind of a cool view. I feel like things I'm looking at are not as sharp as they should be at 4K. I'm not sure why. Some things are sharp, some things are not. I'd expect to be able to read the text on these a little bit easier. So I do think I have to check on my settings. Uh, they might have reverted. A lot of bright blue trucks today. Alright, we're busy loading textures. One thing I could probably do, I mean it'd be maybe a bit of a pain, but I could kind of quickly fly through here once to get all the, ca the textures cached and then record my flight, but that doubles the effort. I'm not sure I'm really going to do that. Um, but it would reduce some of this lag while it's loading textures, I think. Or downloading them, whatever it's doing. Um, I tried to turn on the manual cache, but apparently they don't have 4K data to cache, so I haven't been able to use that. Back to the plane. So we're not too far away from the airport. Soon I will turn off autopilot and take over. Okay, back to the drone and let's uh, load all our textures. Noticing some color banding, which I hadn't seen before, also, so that again makes me think that maybe my video settings have reverted or or something. Anyway, I'm going to reset the drone.
side, and I am going to disengage autopilot and take over. And I'm going to begin sl <coughs> slowing us down because we're going to need to land soon. Landing here. Landing here. Does that when you put the throttle all the way at the bottom? We don't need our landing gear yet. Alright, so um, we can nose down a bit. We're actually at a good altitude, so I don't want to do that too much. Chime tells us that we've dropped below 300 feet of our altitude target. For the longest time I didn't know what that actually meant, and then through observation I noticed that. Smaller states kind of all focus in this area here. Alright, so we've dropped a bit in altitude, but I will nose up and get it back. That'll help slow us down. Philadelphia approach KH 419er. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. KH 419er Philadelphia approach. Cleared through the Bravo airspace. Cleared through Bravo airspace KH 419er. Alright, the co pilot will contact the tower shortly and get landing clearance. So I'm just going to focus on keeping us approximately at the right altitude. I still need to go back up a bit, I think keep our speed near the flaps zone, that white line on the speed ticker tape. The biggest problem I consistently have landing is coming into the airport with too much momentum, so I'm trying to get much better about that. Alright, so that's the altitude I want. Could engage autopilot, but it seems like not so useful at this point. KH 419er, you're leaving my airspace. Resume on navigation. Contact Philadelphia approach on 119er decimal 75. 119er decimal 75 for KH 419er. Philadelphia approach KH 419er, 2100 feet. KH-419er, Philadelphia approach, continue as planned. Altimeter, 2 9 decimal 9 2 Philadelphia approach, KH-419er. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. KH-419er, Philadelphia approach. Cleared through the Bravo airspace. Cleared through Bravo airspace, KH-419er. So I noticed something subtle, the co-pilot, when he switched frequencies, didn't wait and <coughs> listen to see if there was traffic in progress, but just immediately broadcast. I think as a pilot, if you switched frequencies, you would give at least a few seconds to make sure you didn't tune in, you know, between a transmission and an acknowledgement. Um, so just a little slight lack of realism there, I guess. Um, but that's okay. I'm probably the only, buddy who, only one who noticed that. So just trying to balance speed and altitude. We could afford to get a little bit more altitude.
not sure why that blinking autopilot light stays on. Um, I did disengage it the proper way. Philadelphia Tower KH-419er is 1-1 one, one miles southwest with Charlie to land. KH-419er, Philadelphia Tower. Make straight in runway 9 right. Altimeter, 2 9 decimal 9 2 wind 2 3 8 5 Okay, go ahead and put the flaps down. Make straight in runway 9 right, KH-419er. Okay, there's our landing pattern. And landing gear should go down. Now I assume I can turn into this and safely enter it and land, so we'll give that a shot. A lot of times I'll actually go all the way around and enter. Philadelphia Tower, Delta 13515 miles. Delta 1325, Philadelphia Tower. Yeah, we're definitely going too fast, but we'll slow down. That will not be a problem. Get the altitude chiming in. Cleared visual runway and approach Delta 1325. Okay, I'm going to put the flaps down more. Those uh, push hard on the stick forward. Let's get our speed down. I'm going to bring the throttle up now because we're going to need some throttle. Okay, so there's our straight in landing approach. That's nice. This should be very straightforward. I am going to get lose some altitude and then hug the right side center visually on the runway. back on the throttle a little bit, I feel like we've got, yeah, we're going too fast, we've got enough thrust, uh, maybe a little bit more, and then I will bring it back if we start going too slow. To land runway niner, right KH four one niner. All the way down on the throttle and just nose down a bit, trying to lose some of this altitude. Alright. And yeah, we're going too fast, but we'll make that up. Leave the throttle all the way down for a moment and then pick it up. Yeah, it looks like we need to pick it up. Just a little. too fast enough here. Let me uh, just get a little down, a little further down. Okay, that feels better. Alright, throttle's all the way to the bottom, and so I see I'm going to need to get, give it some more thrust. And I'm still nosing up a bit more than I need to be. I need to be kind of centered within these brackets. Alright, well throttle's all the way down. We'll see if that, if we will uh, make it across here Delta without one, three, any more two, thrust. To land runway eight. It just looks like I need a little one, bit. Two, three, eight, at five. Caution, the Beechcraft King Air Landing Runway 9 or right. <laughs> They're warning people about me. Okay, so I feel like this is going Clear to be a runway Delta 1325. Let's pull up and try to hover, try to get those rear wheels down. Stability here at the end, but that should be okay. We'll get those rear wheels down. Hit the brakes, get the front wheel down. And I think we can turn here. 
Alright, I've gone from the stick rudder to the foot pedal rudder. Seems to be going okay. KH419, contact ground on 121.65. Alright, I'm going to come to a stop. 121.65 for KH419. Contact ground. That was actually a pretty good landing, so I've had a series of really awful landings recently. And it seems to come down to a couple of things. Going too fast on the way in and over you know, over adjusting Philadelphia airport information. When it gets a little unstable near the ground. So let's see, taxi to park. There we go. Philadelphia um, so focusing on those things. Seem to pay off this party. time. It's nice when you can actually put the rear wheels down gently and then drop the nose. Feels like a nice proper landing. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Sierra 10 Sierra Sierra 7 Cross Runway 27 Left Uniform KH 419er. Alright, here we go. Fast. It's interesting that the engine RPM doesn't always necessarily correlate with where the throttle is at, and I guess that has to do with maybe the combination of engine cooling and uh, propeller pitch. So it's taking the throttle to mean thrust, not necessarily just uh, fuel consumption. Okay, here comes a bus. KH419er, hold position, caution, other traffic. All right, we are trying to hold stop. Hold position, KH419er. Can't stop super fast, but I'm trying. Are they gonna run into us? KH419er, continue taxi. Okay. Roger, KH-419er. The bus is seeming a little annoying, but that's okay. my responsibility to taxi safely. There's always a truck in the way for some reason. So I will have to steer around that. Seems a little hard to stop the plane on a dime. I don't know if something's changed there. I mean, I can hit the brakes, and it is slowing down, but not not quickly. Uh, parking brake maybe could help with that. Ah, there's my parking spot right there. Do I really need to go all the way around? Can't I just go this way? I'm supposed to go all the way around. One thing I always forget to do is put the flaps up when I land, but it's a real safety issue. You're going too fast and suddenly the plane's starting to lift off the Jet fighters I bought uses uh, front wheel steering, which is kind of nice, instead of relying on the rubber. It has a lot more control. Delta 
does feel like the <coughs> brakes are being a little bit less effective than they used to. Again, I think they're making continuous updates to the flight models, and so it's probably moving in the direction of more realistic, not less realistic. And it's, you know, it's a heavy plane, you wouldn't expect it to be able to stop like that. Right. So, Delta, Delta, I think that was about right. right. Yeah. Just on my list. That's a lot of letter salad I just heard out of his mouth. Okay, so let's gingerly turn into here without running any over the ground crew. Philadelphia ground brickyard 489er2 requesting pushback. Brickyard 489er2 pushback request accepted. Wait, what? Why? That was unusual. Um, there is actually a way I thought. I think there's a way to actually do reverse thrust. And so I might be able to back up just a little if I take the brake off. Nope. Alright, well let's anyway stop all this. Shut the engines down. Oral warning, okay. Okay, there goes the engines. And turn off the plane. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to share, like, and subscribe. And I will see you at the next video. So you can see vehicles going up and over the overpass rather than underneath, which is kind of silly.